So, I received this card in the mail today from Mopar. Apparently, they're ready to start listening to the opinions of the people who purchase their products. So it says, Dear John, develop being a new vehicle is always a challenge. As a Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT owner, your opinions play a crucial role in helping to develop and design future vehicles. Mopar Pace Incorporated would like to invite you to participate in an exclusive online market research study. Our automotive client wants to learn about how you drive on different road types and use the various features in your vehicle. Your feedback will help influence the design of the next generation of these vehicles. By completing the online survey, More Pace will email you a $25 Amazon gift card. And there's a code below, which I folded so you can't see it. Um, and it says, as a thank you for your time and insight, limited quantities available. To tell you the truth, I don't really shop at Amazon, but I'll go for it anyway just to, you know, get the Amazon gift card. I want you guys to participate in the survey with me because you've seen me drive enough to understand exactly what I'm dealing with here in New York. So it says, highway, freeway, multiple lanes of traffic in each direction, typically divided by barrier median, which is uninterrupted by traffic lights or stop signs. Access is restricted in a speed limit that typically exceeds 65 miles per hour. So what they're asking is, about what percentage of miles do I drive on highways, secondary roads, like that in that picture, uh, residential city roads, Unpaved roads. I can't say I really do that, and I certainly don't do these trails. Well, there's no trails around here. So, residential and city roads, I would say that has to be about 50%. Highway, that would probably have to be about 50%. Secondary roads were the ones that are single multiple lanes of traffic. So, instead of this one being... Well, actually, I'll say instead of this one being 50, I'll put this one as 40. I'll say this one's 10 yeah, that makes a lot, that makes more sense, okay? So this is New York City. In your opinion, what is your average speed on a highway freeway where speed limits typically exceed 65 miles per hour? Well, what I can tell you is where speed limits don't typically exceed 65 miles per hour, I believe my average speed is somewhere around 85 to 90. So let's just round that down to about, let's say about 80 miles per hour. That's probably about, no, in fact, when they say average speed, Let's say about 75. Yeah, 75. I think that sounds about right. Okay. In your opinion, what is your average speed on secondary roads? Well, see, I don't fuck around with these twists and turns. You know, that's why the Corvette guys make fun of us Mopar people. Because, oh, yeah, well, you can't make all those turns and shit. Yeah, well, I'll say on the secondary roads, I kind of limit myself to about maybe, let's say 40. 45, 45, 45. Okay. Uh, what is your average speed on residential city roads? Well, my mayor uh, put up a lot of these bullshit arbitrary signs about 25 miles per hour just so that they could justify giving us tickets in the mail if they could catch us uh, in certain zones uh, doing more than, for God's sakes, 25 fucking miles per hour. My car, I think the first gear of my car is like, I think the first gear goes up to like 40 or something like that. So my average speed, I would say, on residential city roads is probably about 40 miles per hour. No, it's actually higher than that. It's probably about 45. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let's try to be honest. Okay, so it says, based on the pictures below, please tell us your best average. What percentage of miles driven per year on each type of terrain? Flatlands? Uh, yeah, a lot. Rolling hills? Very little. Foothills? Very, very little. Mountainous? None. There's no mountains here. This is New York City. So flatlands, I would probably say about 95, rolling hills, probably about, no, in fact, I think it's more than that. Let's say out of a whole year, 2% here, 98% here. Yeah, that makes sense. This is New York City. How often do you pass another vehicle using a passing lane or an oncoming traffic lane? Please select a time frame and then into your response in the box provided. So let's see, per week, maybe about, let's say maybe about 90 times a week. No, in fact, let's round that up to about 100, because you know me, I'd be passing the shit out of these people, these fucking four cylinders and these shitty ass V6s, these fucking Honda Accords and Nissans. You already know how I do it, so yeah. A hundred times a week, I'm passing the shit out of somebody. A hundred? No, I think it's actually higher than that. Let's try, 
a hundred. No, no, it's probably hot because how much I drive a lot. Okay, you know, let's be safe. Let's do a hundred. Yeah, let's be safe. Let's be safe. Okay, how often? Uh oh, here we go. How often do you aggressively accelerate at full throttle from a stop? Whoo! Well, per week. You see, these are questions that Geico and State Farm and Allstate, these are questions you can never fucking answer truthfully. How many times do you aggressively accelerate? Okay, let's say maybe 200 times per week. Basically, any time I touch the throttle, it's aggressive. And, you know, there's a lot of lights around here, and that doesn't help. So, yeah. What is your best estimate for the typical average cruising speed after aggressively accelerating from a stop? Um... My typical cruising speed is like about 70 miles per hour because after 60, that car really comes into its own. So let's hit that. Yeah. That car is a fucking monster. Okay, let, let's see. There we go. How often do you aggressively accelerate at full throttle while the vehicle is already moving? Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> 200 times per week. That's the reason why I'm getting nine miles to a gallon. What are your best estimates for the typical start and end speeds when aggressively accelerating while the vehicle's moving? So, best estimates for the typical start speed. Um, usually it's like zero to 20. Um, aggressively accelerating while the vehicle is moving. Uh, let's say that once I get past those fucking speed cameras, let's say that's the start is about 30 because the speed cameras get you at about 40 around here. So yeah, let's say 30 and let's say I end at about, let's say 70. Yeah, that, that seems about right. You'd have to look at my engine computer because I'm, I'm pretty sure this is close. You know, I might be off plus or five plus or minus five. All right. How often do you back up medium steep grades, loading ramps, boat ramps, almost never? So let's say maybe five times a week. Let's, yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Okay. How often do you back down medium steep grades? Like, like maybe like once per week, like once, almost never. Cause this is New York city. We don't have shit like that. What is your best estimate for the number of times that you have done hard control braking? Let's see, per week, I'd probably say about 100 times. You know, I accelerate fast, I slow down fast, you know? During hard control braking, what is your best estimate for the average starting speed before braking in your average? Well, see, this, what they're basically saying is, once you realize there might be cops in the area, like, what speed are you going when you get ready to slow down? So I would say I'm probably doing between 80 and 90. So let's say that 80 is the speed before braking. Average speed after braking is whatever the speed limit is. So that's probably like, you know, 50 or something. Yeah. And, and I usually slow down a little bit more than that just to be sure. So let's say about 45. Yeah, average, average. Okay. All right. How often do you operate in tight turn situations? Almost never. Uh, let's see, uh, once. <laughs> There's no fucking tight turns in New York City. We got highways. What do you think, I'm driving a Corvette or some shit? How many U-turns do you make while driving in four-wheel drive? Basically a lot. So let's say about, uh, I don't know, 25, something like that. It's a lot, because I make a lot of U-turns. Wheel hop is an objectionable loss of traction whereby the driven wheels of a vehicle violently shake, vibrate, hop, grab, and or thump on acceleration. Do I have wheel hop? Um, I really don't have much wheel hop. Oh, uh, and they got a video. In there. Oh, no, 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 no. See, we don't have those shitty GM trucks. So no, I have zero. Thank you. No wheel hop. Okay. Which, if any of these modifications have you made? Uh, oversized tires? No. Upgraded front shocks? No. I don't really screw with my truck at all. Uh, roll cage, no. Hydraulic, no. None of the above. Yeah, I haven't really done anything stupid to my truck. That's why my truck actually works and stays out of the shop. And now I'm done. It says, thank you for your time to complete our survey. As a token of our appreciation, we like to email you a gift card. So now I just put in my email address, and now they'll give me a little bit of cash that I can spend so I can put more money in that fat-ass pockets of Jeff Bezos. Wonderful. Okay, so let's talk interior. 
to tell you the God's honest truth, the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT interior is actually quite comfortable for me, even though I'm much larger than your average person. And on top of that, it's actually very luxurious. Most of the people who've never been in one of these, when they get in mine, they look around and they're like, wow, this thing is amazing. Because, I mean, you think about it. I got this ultra view moonroof where you can look up there. You can see the moon up there. And at night, it's, it's a great looking car. It's a great looking car. Now, unlike the people who only have the V6, only have the 5.7, when I start mine up, you know, mine starts up with authority, right? Because, you know, I have the SRT model. That's the only way I'm buying one of these things. Now, granted, in the next generation, the majority of people buying are going to probably be buying your V6s with the highest transmission gear ratio you got, like 8-speed, 9-speed, whatever you got at the time. Ultimately, I really don't have many complaints about this interior. Now, obviously, in order to make it look better, we're going to want to change a couple of things. But as far as the seating arrangement goes, I'm more comfortable in this car than I am in even the brand new Navigator or even the Cadillac Escalade. Because I, I never really felt like I was sitting in the seats. Like, there's a difference between sitting on the seats, sitting in the seats. In the Navigator, I felt cramped. And even though it's such a huge truck, the problem is the way Ford spaces the seats um, you know, I didn't have enough leg space in my opinion. So let me just turn this on. Let's take a look at a couple of things. Okay, so granted, you get the Jeep, Jeep Grand Cherokee design. SRT lights up and lets you know that's what you spent all this damn money for. They also have the same graphic in the Trackhawk. I don't know if they have that same graphic in the Overland Summit and the different versions, but having that little graphic is actually really nice. That's something Cadillac has put in their Q system you know, to let you know when you get in one of those things, this is what you're in. You're not in anything else. This is what you're in. It's always important to keep reminding people what they've paid this kind of money for. So let's just look at a couple of things. Okay. It's obvious to me that you're going to offer Chrysler. You're going to offer the larger touchscreen radio from the Ram truck. That's obvious. So the eight inch U connect that may continue in production you may speed it up with software or whatever but it's obvious to me you're going to offer the 11 inch from the ram truck now i personally have really no problem at all with your button layout you've done a very good job you made it so that uh we had uh volume up and seat buttons the only downside is they're on the back of the wheel and some people might not like the fact that they're on the back of the wheel and they have no idea exactly where they are so on this side we have a channel on the left side so it goes up by channel but on the right side on the back we have volume so volume is done by pushing the right side and channel is done by pushing the left now once you get used to driving this thing it's second nature however there's two little dimple buttons within there um i may have to provide a picture because it is nighttime right now there's two little dimple buttons and to tell you the truth as long as i've owned these things i honestly can't remember exactly what the dimples actually do like i can't remember if they go from fm to am i can't remember if they go from like i honestly like right now like look if i push the left dimple button let's see what it does okay the left dimple button goes i think through the favorites yeah the left dimple button goes through the favorites and on the volume side the right dimple button the goes right dimple button it cut my phone off and the reason why is because the right dimple button changes different modes of media so it goes from radio to xm radio to usb to bluetooth connection so when I got to Bluetooth connection, it cut my phone off. So what I had to do was I had to turn off my phone. So my thing about it is I never use those dimple buttons because they're too hard to remember. The little dimples on the volume up and the seek. Too hard to remember. I don't like them. So what I would probably suggest that we do is that we put the uh, controls for the volume and the controls for the seek somewhere on the front. Now... Um, if I were going to think of something to get rid of, I, I mean, I like having, you know, the phone buttons and everything, but those things could be changed in size. Now, to tell you the truth, the size of these things doesn't bother me at all. However, for volume up, volume down, and for seek, it is also possible we could change something right about here, 
change something right about here so we can make it so we, we don't have buttons on the back that we can't see. I think that's a fair enough statement. So basically what I'm saying is we need to redesign the steering wheel just a little bit. I don't really have too much of a problem with it as now. However, one thing I've noticed is nobody really complains about the fact that they don't understand those controls on the back because that most likely a lot of people probably just use the system redundancy and they reach over and they just turn the knob or they turn the seat knob or whatever. So, okay, I don't really have too much of a problem with that, so I don't have a lot to complain about. What I will say, I'll never understand why it is that car companies continue to put stability control here, where if I've got some kid sitting here, the kid can reach up, touch that, and I'm out of stability control. Now, if I was their mother or their father, and I don't know very much about the technology in these cars, I might not notice that this kid hit this button and turned my goddamn stability control off, right? I might not notice that. So for all automakers, can we please don't put the goddamn stability control next to these damn kids because they could, you know, it might not even be a kid. It could be somebody who's just playing with the radio or trying to turn on the AC and they reach there and touch that thing. Why the fuck would you put a button there that disables the stability control of the whole fucking car? Like... Basically, you're saying, oh, yeah, well, we've got all these buttons right here, but don't push this one right here because that causes the car to go out of control, which is basically exactly what it does. Why do y'all do that? Never, ever, ever put stability control next to these passengers. It doesn't make any damn sense. Stability control is a driver feature. That should be over here. That should be next to the steering wheel on the left side where only the driver has access to it. I don't know. Maybe the reason why you did it was because, you know, you have left and right hand drive in different countries. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But for future reference, all you GM, Ford, everybody, do me a favor. Please do not put stability control where the goddamn passenger can touch it. It doesn't make any sense. Speaking of that, I mean, all of these other buttons right here, like... You know, it's okay to put them right here, but I'm just saying, it's like, if I'm a driver, all that stuff should be over here. And I've noticed that companies like Hyundai put it all over here where they figure just the driver will have access to it. And I just came back from South Korea. They drive on the same side of the road that we do. So, you know, I, I just think that the whole driver center should be just for the driver. Like, I don't think that the passenger should have access to stuff like that. And besides, if you stretch out this uh, uh, YouTube, this uh, what is it called, the Uconnect, and you put the same computer as the RAM, then that computer screen is going to stretch from here to here. So if that's true, then the new buttons are going to go right here, and they're also going to go right here. No problem with that. But do me a favor, put those driver buttons on the side that the driver is going to be on. Like you could put them all right here, and it wouldn't even take up any space. So let's get those buttons away from the passenger let's get those buttons next to the driver because you know it never made sense why would you put the stability control next to the damn passenger that shit don't make no sense okay so next point of contention when you start these cars these cars start in automatic mode right so down here you see that it starts in auto mode right now when i want to race the shit out of somebody like one of these damn econo boxes on the road Usually what I'll do is I'll put it into sport mode just by tapping the shifter up or down. Now, the newer shifter, which is a polystable shifter, this is the monostat shifter. The polystable shifter has like kind of a weird manual where you have to pull it to the side and then you have to push it back and forth. But you don't have to really do that because if you really wanted to do that, you could just hit these paddle shifters right here. And when you hit the paddle shifters, that puts it in different drive modes. Now, it's not gonna do it now because I'm in park. Now, in my opinion, I don't see the point of this eco button right here. What you could do is you could make it so that this knob either starts in automatic or economy. Or you could just move this one and this one down, and then you could put economy mode next to auto so that, you know, auto will light up in orange, economy mode will light up in green, and green is obviously, you know, the liberal code for, oh, I'm saving energy, I'm being green. You know, I didn't have enough money to buy one of those $90,000 electric cars from Tesla, but I'm trying to be as green as possible in my 6.4 liter Hemi. So anyway, economy could be down here. It doesn't necessarily have to be here. I don't see the point of that. I, I have no idea why that needs to be right there. An economy button, in my opinion, is just a waste of space. Now, 
um, the newer Jeeps have like, you know, self park and all that. And that adds another button right here. And then they have some of the Jeeps have the auto engine on and off right here. Okay. So that'll add a couple more buttons right there. No big deal. So right now I really don't have too many complaints. What I will say is that I really hope that you're going to get rid of these carbon fiber panels unless what you're prepared to do is make them more than just laminates because the problem is even though they're nice laminates the problem is when the heat gets high these things start to peel off and i'm pretty sure a lot of jeep owners have had problems with that applique haze coming off um you can applique applique whatever you want to call it i've had issues in the chrysler 300 i've had issues in this car too because this applique it's under direct heat all the time if it's a sticker you know, the glue melts and the thing comes off. I don't like that. And it doesn't make sense that somebody should have to bring one of these cars back to the dealership for a goddamn sticker. And I think most people would agree with me. That don't make no damn sense. So let's take care of that. Let's make it so that that shit's not a sticker, please. Um, one other thing I should say is I got used to the Mercedes S550 where if I wanted to turn on heated and cooled seats that the buttons were up here next to the uh, uh, next to the um, door unlock and lock. I see no reason why there can't be a small space right here that activates heated and cooled seats. I see no reason why not. You could have one of those buttons right here, one right here. Now I noticed like the newer cars, like the Range Rovers, they have these really thick sides and they put their buttons up here, like the Range Rovers and the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the Jaguar, they put their buttons, some of them put their buttons like way up here and everything. Um, I don't feel that that's necessary, but I would say that even the layout right here is a great layout. It's very simple. It's very intuitive. But let's put the heated and cooled seat button as a redundant button. Let's put heated and cooled seats right here. And it can be like a dual stage button where you hit it once and it's low and then you hit it again and it's high. And this way, I don't always, like, let's say I get into the car and I've got hands that have ice and snow and everything or they're dirty or whatever. I don't have to reach over here to turn on my heated seat if my heated seat's not already on. All I got to do is hit the button on the side. Let's do that. In fact, for the rear seat passenger, we could do that for the rear seat passenger too. Next to the door latch, we can have the heated seat button. Now, Heated and cooled seats would be a really nice option for the Overland Summits later on. It would be really, really nice. But um, yeah, let's let's get on that. And, and as far as the interior space of this car, because of the fact that the Jeep SRT also is accompanied by the Dodge Durango, I really don't think you need to change the interior space in this car. The one big mistake that you made with the Chrysler 300 and the Dodge Charger is what you did was you made the windshield steeper and that took away a lot of headspace out of the car which also necessitated you to make these seats smaller in the Chrysler 300 and I always hated that because it made the car unnecessarily lengthy but made it so I couldn't sit straight up and as it, considering how big a car that was like it didn't make any damn sense I should have been able to sit straight up in that car I couldn't sit straight up in that car the one thing I love about this car is that even if I'm sitting straight up you still get ridiculous amounts of headroom in this car and that's one of the reasons why the Jeep SRT is easily your best product it's obviously one of your best selling products but the thing I love about it is it's so spacious until I can use it for just about every purpose so that is really really good there's not really too much I'd want to mess with here, but I know your engineers are pretty good at making uh, infotainments because right now Uconnect is pretty much the best infotainment system on the entire market. So that's actually a really good thing. So I wouldn't really mess with that too much. But, um, you know, there's a lot of dead space right here. The driver controls, like what I pointed out here, those driver controls could be right here above the shifter and it would still not interfere with the passenger. So, you know, that's all good. But um, most of this stuff is actually very well designed. Like, as you can see, I have the USB, SD, and I also have an auxiliary cable. And I know most people don't really use auxiliary anymore because most people listen to digital media. But what I would recommend is not getting rid of it because the thing about it is if you get rid of it, it, it makes it so people can't easily have access to their radio. Auxiliary and USB should be automatically those should come with every car. Now, I've seen in the RAM how I think you have USB-C charging. That's great, too. 
But um, auxiliary should stay. You shouldn't get rid of that. Now, if you want to get rid of CD players, fine by me. If CDs are pretty much played out, you know, you can keep charging people five hundred dollars for the CD player option in the in the Jeep Trackhawk. That's fine by me. Who cares? Most people won't even notice it when they finance the car. But uh, CDs are played out. It's dead space. It's unnecessary. You know, most people don't want it because you know it's it's just an extra moving part for shit to go wrong and break. Now, everything else, I, I have to say, I mean. This car, I have to say, is quite well designed. I'm very, very, very satisfied with the Jeep SRT. In fact, I'm more satisfied with the Jeep SRT than I was with the Hellcat when I purchased it. Way more satisfied. This is actually my favorite. This is easily my favorite. Now, granted, it's dark and everything, so you really can't see much. But what I can say is... Um, we got to make sure our wheels on the new Jeep Grand Cherokee stand out like the wheels that I have. Those wheels, um, you're not going to be able to see it in this picture, but I have, I'll put a picture up there because it's dark right now. Those wheels are the best wheels, and the Trackhawk wheels suck. They suck. And I know there's this guy, what's his name? There's two guys, Brian Orton and this other guy, Scott Mowbray, who run Jeep forums on the uh, Facebook. And they troll my page because they hate it when I criticize. But that's your goddamn problem. There ain't shit you can do about it. I'm going to say whatever I feel like saying, buddy. So anyway, um, I'm very happy with the interior space of this. Um, the Durango, if I, if I had a bunch of kids because I kept having unprotected sex with my wife, I would just get the Durango. And then I'd have those extra two rolls and everything. But the Jeep is actually perfect for me because it has everything. It has everything I need. It has everything I need. Perfect space. And, you know, I keep, like, a little toolbox back here and everything. Perfect space. I love it. It's got one subwoofer on this side. You'll never put two subwoofers in the thing, but I guess nobody really complained about it. Anybody who really did, they could have put their own sub in there. But it's the 19-piece the Hardman Carden is very well balanced out. So I'm very happy with it. Very, very happy with it. Very, 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 very happy with it. So I really, you know, it's funny. Like, I have very few complaints about this car it works so perfectly and that's the reason why the jeep grand cherokee is such a perfect seller what i do have a problem with is how you people screwed up the track hawk by taking away the cool looking lights on the track hawk like if i start this thing up you can see the led strips and no matter how far away somebody is from my car when i'm coming down the street they know my car is special simply because they can see those led lights and my LED lights don't look like the Overland Summit lights. That's how people know right away it's a Jeep SRT. For you to take that away from the Trackhawk, you basically killed that car. In fact, I would have taken it another level. I would have put two rows of LED lights on there just so when people saw that, they'd be like, holy shit, what is that? And then they hear the supercharger whining and shit from half a mile away. And they hear that thing rushing at them. And they're looking, they're like, holy shit, look at that shit. What is that? You know, you, you made it look so fucking boring. And that's what we got to do. We got to make it so that it doesn't look boring. If it looks boring, people are going to leave them shits on the lot. They're going to languish in the summer heat. And we can't have that. We got to make it so that the Jeep SRT is shining. Shine, absolutely shining. Okay, so basically that's all I wanted to say. So those lights got to be there. Got to have them. And they do have fog lights because there's actually a fog light right there. But right now it's not on until you actually initiate the car. But uh, the headlights and the fog lights are off. But other than that, I mean, you did a really good job with this car. You did a better job with this than the $100,000 track hog. I don't know how you fucked that up. I really don't know. And then you took away my favorite wheels and everything. It's like you should have never taken those wheels away. In fact, you should have done, you should have made them bigger. You know, but you did. I don't know what y'all are doing. But that's why them things are sitting on a lot and you'll get ready to knock $10,000 off them. So, um... Let's recap. Okay, so let's just recap, go back over this real quick. I made this meme myself for people just like Scott Mulberry of the uh, Jeep SRT uh, Trackhawk on Facebook forums so that this way he could understand that I mean business. Him and Brian Orton, who drives around in an old Jeep SRT. Because I don't do that old stuff like that. But anyway, this is what the Jeep Trackhawk should have looked like. Now, even with this picture, I'm still disappointed because, yeah, it has this cool spoiler and everything, but there's no lights right here like mine has. I think it should have had lights. It doesn't have lights, but it should have goddamn well had that hood. That thing looked right there. That thing looks like a stormtrooper. That thing looks so big and powerful. It's got the Hellcat wheels, not those shitty, ugly-ass wheels that they put. <sighs> I hate these people. I really do. So let's see. Okay, so that is the Trackhawk, what it should have looked like. 
Now, right here, this is the RAM's new infotainment system with the larger Uconnect screen. Basically, the large Uconnect screen is really not much different than the current one. It's just that it's bigger. Instead of just having one computer screen down here, it has basically the same thing repeated. So you got one, you got two. It, I've used it in person when I was in the RAM. It looked crisp. It looked responsive. It seemed fast and everything. Now, I know they're not going to copy this entire layout because only the trucks have a layout like this with the two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive height adjustments and all that. But... I'm pretty sure however they decide to fit this in there, they're going to fit it in there nicely. My only problem is the vertical arrangement. Like, you know, a lot of these companies, especially Toyota Prius, they tried to copy Tesla and they tried to make themselves have their vertical screen. Me personally, I would prefer it if it was a wide screen, like instead of if it takes up this, you know, this vertical space, if it was a wide screen. I think wide screen works better because, you know, humans have stereoscopic vision because we have two eyes on the side of our head. I think wide screens work better than, you know, Tesla's vertical layout. Either that or I should also say that the bottom screen forces you to look away from the road. It forces you to look down rather than to be able to keep your eyes at the eye line of sight with the hood. So my thing is, I think widescreen would be way better, even if they do keep a large size like this. For the Tesla, it works, and the reason why is because you're laying down. You're not sitting straight up like when you're in a truck or an SUV. So that's the way I feel about that. Now, as far as body cladding, let's go to this folder. Um... I was very disappointed they didn't have any cool spoiler work. Here you have this company, Renegade. Renegade makes pieces that you can add onto the Jeep. Now this back spoiler right here, I wouldn't add at all. But they also, they have a top spoiler I like, and then they also have these dual cans right here, um, like the Trackhawk has, except the Trackhawk, they did a shit job on the dual exhaust too. Scott Mulberry, you listen to me? They did a shit job. And that's the reason why you're already trying to mod your own Jeep. Because you know it's not exciting. Like, let's look right here. Let's look at who I'm talking about. Because some of you don't know who I'm talking about. I'm going to give him a shout out. Because the poor guy, he's been trying to troll me. He's doing his best to troll me. And the problem is, the poor bastard... People go on his YouTube, nobody pays attention to him. He runs a damn for his name is The Jeep Guy. The fucking bastard trolls me, and the problem is nobody pays attention to him. So he only has he has like 116 videos. He's got 372 subscribers. So hopefully he'll get a couple of my haters to join him. But you know, whether he does or not, I can give a shit. But the thing about it is this poor guy, he went on and he bought a new uh GT horse my shaft raw racing uh exhaust and he had to do that because he noticed that his jeep was quiet and it was boring just like i said in the very beginning i said the thing is quiet and boring so he bought all he spent wasted his money he got his jeep used and he used the extra money that he normally would have used to buy it new and he started buying all this extra shit because his jeep is boring it's just boring and it's sad because even though he's a pain in my ass, you know, the only reason why I haven't deleted him is because I'm going, I'm not going to stop attacking him until he sees things my way. And if he never sees things my way, I'm not going to stop attacking him. So basically right here, um, he has, uh, what is it? What is it? I put, I, I said, yeah, FCA dropped the ball so bad. Cause I want to remind him every single time he gets into that Jeep, I just want to remind him that FCA should have done a better job with this Jeep. So basically, I'm giving him a shout out. So right now, he only has like 373 subscribers. So hopefully by the end of tomorrow, he'll have a couple more. And he can thank me for that because, you know, I'm his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So anyway, right here, they have a Trackhawk spoiler, which would have looked nicer than the one that we currently have. Like, I was thinking, yes, yeah, something with cuts and splits. That would be really nice. Like, that would actually let people know that, hey, you've got something cool here and not like the regular one. Whenever I pass by somebody in a regular Jeep, I want them to know that my Jeep is way more expensive and faster than theirs. And I'm sorry, it's a dick measuring contest, but that's just what it is. I'm sorry, that's just what it is. It's simple Darwinism. So also, chin spoilers. 
Serona Design has a chin spoiler right here that you can get, like, uh, and it can be body painted. So if you have a white Jeep, you can get that chin spoiler right there. So as you can see, this is either a 17 or an 18 based upon these ugly ass fog lights that FCA should have never fucking put down here because they're ugly. They should have been like right here. Even if you were going to put it down here, you should have put something right here so that there's not this huge gap in space. I don't like that. Okay, so Serona makes that one. Serona also, Serona's in Queens here. They also make this black chin spoiler right here. I actually like that black chin spoiler. So I could actually consider getting something like that on the new Jeep. So when they start talking about, oh, well, gee, how do you want us to design it? Well, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to put shit on it that makes us understand that I spent a lot of money for this thing. So also, the wheels, though, that's the most important thing. You got to have these wheels. So let, let's go straight to the wheels. See, because this is how they started fucking up. I, these, these people are disgusting. So this is what the current track hook looks like. I took this picture at Toys for Fots last year during the snow. Guy had just gotten his new track hook. I actually passed him on the road. He had just gotten it. He brought it there. Nobody even noticed it was different because it didn't have the Hellcat hood. It does have the yellow brake calipers, but nobody really cares about that because yellow does not scream fast. It does not scream speed. The rest of his body cladding is the exact same body cladding that you would have gotten on a 17 or an 18 SRT. And he doesn't even have the fog lights right there. That I consider is a problem. Now, the Jeep SRT that they had, oh, I'm sorry, the Jeep Trackhawk, the one that they had sitting up on the top of Westbury, this is what it looked like. This was the silver one I was looking at. I, I was like, wait, there's no fucking way I'm paying $97,000. That's ridiculous. As you can see, it's all plain Jane, does not have the Hellcat hood. That's how they pretty much screwed that Jeep over. And that's the reason why they're having such a hard time selling most of them. Now, the tr wheels from the 1718 look like shit. Those are ugly ass wheels. Ugly ass wheels. The rest of the body cladding is the exact same. Ugly ass wheels. You fucked up. So, right here... These are those ugly ass wheels. Instead of black, they are chrome. They are ugly ass wheels. You remember how OJ said he didn't like those ugly ass shoes? Well, I don't like these ugly ass shoes. Ugly ass wheels, don't like them. So that's what they're putting on the 17s, 18s, and the track hook. So for $100,000, you get the same ugly ass wheels that you get on the 17, 18. That right there is a slap in your face. These are my wheels. These wheels, at first, when I first saw these wheels, I was like, man, those wheels look weird. And then I started thinking about it, I was like, you know, these wheels look pretty fucking cool. Because the thing about it is they got these vents and slots and everything. Like, you don't see shit like that. I'm sitting, when I'm sitting in the Walmart parking lot or I'm at BJ's, I'm at Costco, I get old women. I swear to God, I get old women who walk up to me and they're like, excuse me, sir. What? Can I ask you a question about your car? Why is this part right here red? And then I have to tell, oh, do you know what the calipers are? Well, these calipers are red because these are big, heavy calipers designed to make something that's going really fucking fast stop really fucking fast. That's what it's for. So you and your little Toyota with your less than 200 horsepower, you don't need colored calipers like this. You don't need it because your car is slow. Your Honda Accord, your car is slow. Your Nissan anything except GTR, your car is slow. So you don't need these colored calipers. I need them because I want to be able to, you know, actually drop my speed from 100 down to like 40. And I want to do it quick enough so that I don't run into the next person in front of me. So these are my wheels. And these, I think, are absolutely fabulous because they look unlike anything on any other car. And that's what I want. I want my shit to look completely different from yours. So if you all buying black and red and white Jeep SRTs, I'm buying silver. If I could buy something even more ridiculously exotic, I would. Or if I could paint it myself or wrap it in a way where you couldn't wrap yours to look like mine, that's exactly what I do. But I, I apparently, I'm, there's not very many people driving around in silver Jeep SRTs. So I like the way mine looks. I don't want mine looking anything like yours. When people see mine, they know exactly who I am. And uh, that's the way I like it. I don't have to put stickers. I don't have to put my Instagram on the window. I don't have to put my Facebook on the window. I don't have to put my YouTube on the window. I don't have to have a YouTube sticker. When you see my car in the mirror, when you see my car from the side, you know that it's my car. And that's the way I like it. In fact, this picture I made on Forza, 
I was playing Forza and I made a picture of my car on Forza and I made it spec'd out exactly the way it is in real life. I didn't change a thing because I like OEM. I like everything OEM. Look at that. That's a fucking monster right there. It's a badass monster. And if we're designing cars, like if I'm going to go and I'm going to help Mopar, if we're going to design cars for the second design phase because I finished the survey and everything, this is what we got to do. We got to make cars. We're not going to build just regular cars. We're going to make fucking monsters. Everything's going to be a monster. V6, 300 horsepower, 9 speed. I demand that every single product we make is faster than every product you make. So if you're Nissan or your Toyota or Honda or whatever, whatever your car can do, we're going to do that shit faster. We're going to stop faster. We're going to turn faster. I want to make it so that the roads are insane. Like, I want to make the roads where you're going to need racetracks just to get to work. Like, I want to make it so that... When these loses in these Honda Accords and these shitty ass fucking Maximus, every single time that one of your kids borrows your car and they're on the road and they're like, yeah, this Maximus is so fast. I got my parents car. This Maximus is so fast. As soon as they make the mistake of getting next to me on the highway, I'm a light they ass up. Here we go. This right here is a, a, a lesson in power. You just because you got red brakes don't mean you're nobody. You got that Stelvio. But you don't have, what's it called, the Quadrifaglio. So the Quadrifaglio, now see this is what Marconi has done to Chrysler. He's pushed all that bullshit off on us. So this poor bastard thinks when that light turns red that he's going to be able to watch this shit. Watch this shit. This poor bastard thinks he's going to be able to race him with the Quadrifaglio. But he doesn't have that little silly four-leaf clover on his shit. I don't think so, buddy. I don't fucking think so. I don't think so. Stay back there. Stay back there. I don't think so. No. No, bad dog. Now I gotta slow down, cause usually there'd be cops like right here, they'd be waiting. Okay, nobody there, good. So he's in my uh, rear view mirror, that's where you stay. Those shitty ass Italian cars, that's where you fucking stay. If it doesn't say Lamborghini or Ferrari, you stay right behind me, goddammit. Uh oh, gotta slow down, gotta slow down, look at this, look at this. You gotta watch out for these guys. They be planting fucking sneaker trucks and shit in your neighborhood and everything, waiting for you to steal that shit. Next thing you know, you're in jail. You gotta be so careful. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Quadrifaglio. What has Marconi done to my company? God damn it. We used to have fucking Chryslers with 475 horsepower. We could have had demon Jeeps. We could have had red eye charges. And these bastards, they, they're trying to sell all these stupid little Italian cars. That's what you get. That's what you get. You better stay behind me, boy. For some daytime driving. I think what ultimately uh, jades me about the SRT models is the fact that they come with just about every single feature. So things like the competition air suspension that this car has. Even though this truck rides on 20s, you wouldn't really notice it because of how soft the ride actually is. So we're in some of these BMWs and Mercedes, they have rougher rides because of the fact that they're riding low profiles. This car may have 20s, but it doesn't really have low profiles. It has thick tires and that's backed up with the air suspension, which really, really helps a lot with road isolation. I was, I was watching a Doug DeMuro video and he was talking about the uh, Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio uh, the new Stelvio SUV and he was talking about how rough the ride actually is and that's because with that truck $85,000 they've decided to chase after sports car driving dynamics the Jeep SRT is by no means a sports car the Jeep SRT no matter how many people want to say it's not is essentially a truck this thing is 5200 pounds and it's big enough for you to understand how big this thing actually is. It's riding on basically what could be considered a truck. In fact, it weighs more than a lot of light trucks actually do. So, you know, some people want to say, oh, it's just an SUV, but my thing is, listen, when you're paying my bills, you can call whatever you want, but as long as I'm sending checks to Chrysler, I'm calling it a truck. So anyway, when they're talking about, well, what improvements could they make? As far as ride quality goes, I honestly can't really think of any. You know, I've uh, demonstrated for you the autonomous driving feature that it has, the uh, automatic adaptive cruise control, which is very, very simple to use. 
and um, all you gotta actually do is you hit one button to prepare it. You hit that one button right there and it goes into adaptive cruise mode and it says ready. So if I'm behind this guy and I wanna set a speed, all I gotta do is hit one more button, the set button. And when I hit set, I can take my foot off the steering wheel and the Jeep will continue at 61 miles per hour. Now, the only way I really would love to improve on that is if I didn't have to use my hands. I made a video demonstrating Cadillac's Super Cruise, and they have their self-driving feature, which allows you to basically take both hands off the wheel, and it will keep the lane, and it will slow itself to a stop, it will resume itself, that is fantastic. That's what people want, and the reason why is because, as you can see, we're stuck in traffic all the goddamn time. So if we have autonomous driving that helps us with the stop and go of traffic, that would be fantastic, and it would also probably cut down on the number of car accidents where somebody is not paying enough attention or they're drifting off because they're having a hard time staying awake. And in just that split second, they're getting into a car accident. So as you can see, my adaptive cruise control, I'm not using the foot. It's working as promised, you know? And that's what, we'll, that's what we want. That, that's, the, that's what I call a luxury feature. That, that's something that I wish more cars had. I wish more cars had front bumper sensors and had rear bumper sensors so that they could um, make sure that they don't back into anybody or run into anybody. That's the price of the Pacific, obviously. Same color as my car. But um, I love it. I gotta say, I, I've said it a hundred times, the Jeep SRT is easily FCA's best product. It's better than the Dodge in build quality. I haven't had a single problem up till 30,000 miles, basically. I'm at 30,058 miles. Best build quality. It's got even slightly better build quality than the Chrysler cars, especially the Chrysler rear-wheel drive cars are old. I, don't, I can't really speak on the long-term reliability of the Chrysler all-wheel drive V6, but I can say that uh, the Jeep Grand Cherokee has absolutely um, kept me happy. And because of all this space, all this space in this thing, it's kept me extremely happy. Because at any given time, I can go shopping, I can put certain items in here, and um, you know, it, 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 it's a fantastic vehicle. It's, a very, it's, a, it's, a, it's won a lot of awards. In fact, I have a Jeep Grand Cherokee sneaking up on my back right now. So let me uh, just keep my cruise control on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let him get close so he can see what it's like to have an SRT model. Him and his wife are in there. It's like, oh honey, don't try to race this guy. Don't try to race this guy. He's got an SRT and all you have is the SK speed license plate. That's not gonna give you much horsepower gains because he has red ripples. So you can't race him, honey. Don't try it. Just don't try it, honey. Don't do it. You know, don't try to race them, honey. Just don't do it. Please don't do it. It's dangerous to drive race cars in New York City. So, yeah. So, anyway. I, I, I'm completely happy with it. I mean, that, yeah, I mean, there's always places where you can improve. But the thing about it is, in this vehicle, the only things that need improvement are the places where you can actually see that it needs improvement. So, um, you know, these Acuras right here, I don't want those. It's sad because I've driven that TL for long periods of time. And the TL was actually a good car, but Acura went and fucked it up. And they made all their cars smaller, which I don't understand why the hell they did that. So they have an RLX that sucks. They have an RLX that completely sucks. It's too small. Hyundai Genesis is better. They have a TLX, which is too small. People want something bigger, so a lot of them go over to Infiniti. Because, you know, a lot of them, they, they feel that driving a foreign car makes them cooler, which it does not especially when your farm car has a shitty fucking V6 in it and you can't barely hear it when you turn it on. So it's like, my thing is, listen, if you really gotta have a foreign car because you wanna feel cool, you might as well buy a Hyundai. Because at least you'll get a lot of space and you'll get that all-wheel drive h track. And if you buy the Hyundai Stinger, it'll kinda look like a Maserati cross with a BMW. Like this Maserati. And you'll appreciate it a little bit more because not a lot of people have the Stinger because not a lot of people are stupid enough to spend $60,000 on a fucking Kia. So, that's something worth remembering. See these infinities, they're so boring. I'm amazed people don't die going to sleep in those things. Like crashing into walls and shit going to sleep. I'm amazed. 
So let me get around this guy. This guy feels that he got past me, so let me sneak up on him. I see a lot of Jeep Grand Cherokees because they're just so spacious and they are really, really great for the family. And if you have a big family, you just get the Durango and you're happier, you know? There's no reason to go to like Infinity and there's no reason to go to Acura because the MDX sucks, it's boring. Like some people may talk about how great the reliability is. My thing is, there's nothing in there to break because they suck and they're boring, you know? I got heated, cooled seats on my butt. I got a uh, ultra view moonroof. It's like I've got shit in this thing that nobody ever expected to ever be in an SUV this size. And that's why I really appreciate this product to have adaptive cruise control for people like this. You see this, ch I, I don't want to call out of her name. No, actually I do want to call out her name. She's looking down, she's texting and shit. Now what happens, now see I got adaptive cruise control. So my car will slow itself to a stop. I don't even have to watch this guy. And this chick's in there with this goddamn old ass Avalon and she's got that text message right up to her. Look at this, look how much space there is. See, we wouldn't even have traffic if it wasn't for these people texting and not paying attention to the road. You can say what you want about speeding, but at least when I'm speeding, I'm paying attention. She's up there not even paying attention. She's technically blind. Where, where's the justice? Where's the justice? She's texting her boyfriend or her, her mans who she's cheating on and she's not paying attention to the road and she's putting the rest of our lives in danger because just because she's a booty call and that's ridiculous but see me you don't have to worry about me i've never crashed my jeep and the reason why is because i got adaptive cruise control look at that my feet ain't doing jack look at that not even on the accelerator and yet this son of a bitch slowing itself down speeding itself up based on radars that's what i'm talking about see that shitty ass toyota ain't got that now i'm pretty sure sooner or later they'll have it bottom line is she ain't got it and she's sitting in traffic texting putting all our lives in jeopardy that's the reason why i have to speed because all this goddamn traffic see somebody like the easy my philosophy is this if I can keep you far enough behind me, any car accident that you get into won't be my problem. That's my philosophy. That's why what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to make this thing as fast as possible, FCA. We're gonna put the fucking hell, we're gonna put the demon engine in this motherfucker. This way, we could do no less than 205 miles per hour everywhere we go. And all these people are sitting in traffic texting. They stay way behind us, sitting in traffic. Meanwhile, I'm in the next county, next state. That's how we gotta do it. All these these lame, boring ass. Look at these SUVs. These things are boring. And they all got these little tiny chicks. Did you see this chick? Look how small she is. She can barely see over the steering wheel. But there's a reason for that. Women love big, big SUVs. And the reason why is because it gives them a feeling of empowerment. It makes them feel like they're powerful. Like the last thing a woman wants is she doesn't want to be on one of these Chevy uh, cruises and she has to stare up at people like me who are looking down at her ass. She, she don't want that. So what we have to do is we have to base all of our changes on psychology, see? Women want big, powerful SUVs. They want big, powerful trucks. They want Escalades and all that stuff. Problem is most of them can't afford it unless they have a rich husband. Because those things are really expensive. Like those things are like $90,000. But um, that's what it, that's basically what it is. And these chicks, like God forbid, what's her name right there with that Avalon? God forbid she had a truck like that because she's up there not paying attention. And because she's not paying attention, she's putting all eyes at risk because she got a big ass truck to run that shit into somebody. You know? You got a Wrangler back here. Everybody's buying those Wranglers. They like that off-road technology. I don't need off-road. I'm gonna stay on road. Yeah, that's basically what it is. It's like what we gotta do is if we're gonna we're gonna change these cars, man. We're gonna make these cars slightly better, but we're gonna make them as cool as possible. That's what we gotta do. You know? A lot of people don't want these little Chevy Cruises. That's like a retirement car. That's like a car you die in. It's like, no thank you, no thank you. I want something cool. Like this, like look at this guy. That's a retirement car, but unfortunately he chose wrong. He got a Camaro. He should have gotten himself a, a, a Challenger. Then he'd be really cool. Black freaking Camaro. Those things are boring. The ZL1 is slower than the Hellcat. It's only got 650 the hellcat got 707 you can't race one of those damn things you can have a ctsb a hundred thousand dollars and you get your ass beat by a seventy thousand dollar hellcat i mean you know that's just what it is look we got another camaro here look at that see traffic is really fun when you're with me 
just got a red Camaro right there. Red Camaro, black Camaro. So boring. So boring. Oh, we got the old LS uh, Lexus SC400. I remember checking one of these out a long time ago. These are boring too. Hopefully she made all the payments on that thing. Oh, in fact, to wait, wait. Turn this uh, radio down. I forgot about these copyrights. Yeah, these boring Nissans. Nobody wants those. I mean, you know, people buy them because they don't really have a choice. I mean, it's either that or a RAV4. Nobody wants a RAV4. Those are really suck. Ford, Ford Explorer, Ford Edge. Those are pretty cool. You know, they're, they're about the same size. Uh-oh. Okay, let me slow down. So you always got to pay attention to your adaptive cruise control because you never know when some fucker is riding away from the lines and merging when he shouldn't be. So what you do is when you step on the uh, brake, it cancels itself. And to restart, all you do is push one button. You just push resume. So let's. what we'll do is we'll just wait until he gets a certain distance, just a little bit further. As soon as he starts moving, then we'll hit resume. So watch this, watch this. So he starts moving. Watch this, one button. Boom, resume, 81 miles per hour. But it's not going to go to 81 miles. Look at this fucking guy. I swear to God, you better not. You better not. I will send you to the National Highway Transportation Safety Bureau if you try to roll off. Son of a bitch. You better not. FWV 4708. You better not. You better not. You had better not. You had better not. You better get yourself back in the line, buddy. Look at this guy. This guy's breaking the law. You can't do that shit. If I can't do it, you can't do it. Fuck this guy think he is. Fucking Lexus. Hate Lexus. Does this guy think he is? You better not go. You better not cross that divide. I'm sending you straight to the federal government. Look at him. He's trying to do something. I don't know what this guy's trying to do. Look at this guy. He nearly cut off that Prius. Look, what is this guy doing? Yo, guys, stay off the drugs, you fuck. Stay off the drugs. Look at this guy. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. All right, yeah, yeah, don't, you know, you're gonna end up on real stories of the highway patrol, buddy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Violating federal transportation safety highway rules. Oh, man, look at this guy. You gotta be on YouTube, buddy. Look at this guy. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, let, let's see who's laughing. Let's see who's laughing when the feds show up at your door, buddy. Damn this traffic. No wonder why he did that. That shit makes me want to do it. I should jump up on the uh, uh, shoulder and just keep going. This is bullshit. Look at this traffic. No wonder why I'm only getting 11 miles per gallon. Look at this shit. In fact, look, oh, 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 excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let me get over here. Let me get right here in the middle and hit my adaptive cruise control so this way I don't have to use my. Oh, in fact, let me get over here. Let me get over here. Yeah, let me get over here. It looks like this is moving. Let me hit that adaptive cruise control. Adaptive cruise control, I need you to adapt. Son of a bitch, Lexus. Oh, wait a minute. It looks like they're merging back into this other way. You see, if you really study the driving habits of the average Jeep Grand Cherokee owner, you learn a lot. Look at this, there's another one. There's a white one right there. See, everybody's got white, white Jeep Grand Cherokee, white Jeep Grand Cherokee, black Jeep Grand Cherokee. These things are everywhere, man. And the reason why is because they give you so much space. They're not terribly expensive. They start about $40,000. If you notice, all these people got the limiteds. Apparently, they're not uh, working overtime, making all that cash that they need to buy the SRT. That's fine. You know, some people don't want to get 11 miles to a gallon. But, um, lots of Jeep Grand Cherokees. It's like anytime you're in traffic, oh, and I think I see there's a, another white one up there. Yeah. I don't see that. Usually there's like red, white, black. Usually you see the, oh, wait, wait. Oh, that's a Ford. That one's a Ford. That's a red Ford. But if you study us long enough, you, you start to understand, you know, that these are really damn good vehicles. Anybody who's thinking about getting a Jeep Grand Cherokee, get one. Now, if you can't get the SRT, you might as well get the fully loaded V6 model because I honestly, the 5.7, unless you're towing shit, I don't see the point in it. You might as well just save the fuel. Look at this guy, look at this guy. 
Look at this guy. He doesn't even want to look at me because he's he's disgusting. He's like, how did this guy get the SRT and I don't have the SRT? I wish I had the SRT. Yeah, he doesn't even want to look at me. Got his shades on. You know you can see me in the corner of your eye, buddy. I got shades on too. Yeah, but uh, all you got to do is study our driving habits and you learn a lot. I, I really think that we can make FCA great again. And I already did the survey, and all we got to do is we just got to push this shit to 11. In fact, take it past 11. Let's go to 12. 11's for suckers. Yeah. Very cool vehicle. Gotta love it. And I haven't really seen any Durangos today, but the Durango is also a great vehicle, you know, if you can afford it. As a Durango, I mean, you know, when you got to haul a bunch of kids, because you don't like to use protected sex and you keep having all these children. It's like, uh, the Durango is actually a damn good vehicle. It really is. Really, really is. Video that it was prudent to uh, play Count the Trackhawks one more time. Um, as you can see, that uh, Mango Hellcat with the orange brake calipers is still here. Oh look, another happy customer with the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Anybody with a Jeep Grand Cherokee is obviously happy. So, again, I think these are the exact same cars that were here last time. So let's go play Count the Trackhawks real quick. We're going to make this real quick. Play Count the Trackhawks. I love this game! One Trackhawk. Two Trackhawks. Damn, they're just not moving like they should be. I wonder why. Okay, so we're up to two. God damn, I love this game. This shit is more fun than watching uh, NFL players kneeling at the National Anthem. Than watching all these triggered ass right wing losers who can't play the sport because they break their fucking arms, legs, and toes. And they're sitting at home getting upset. This shit is hilarious. Oh look, this guy has a silver one. That must be a limited. This guy has a silver Jeep here. Oh, to two track hogs. What's up? Oh, this is an SRT model, except it has those ugly ass shit wheels. <laughs> so here we got these uh, scat packs. So keep in mind, this is security Dodge at Amityville. For all of your Charger, Challenger, Hellcat, Jeep, Ram buying needs, this is the place you gotta come. Because they have like one of the best inventories. Look at this wide body. They got one of the best inventories. They got a nice wide inventory. And these performance cars, these things actually really move, you know? So for all your buying needs, just come on down to security. Security Dodge, Amityville. So we got the black, black Hellcat right here, yellow, yellow, white, and gray. So if anybody's looking for one of these and you want a lease, come on down. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish playing Count the Track Hawks. Okay, I'm doing this by out. Let's finish playing Count the Track Hawks. Let's count them. Let's see what they got. <laughs> I'll try to keep it straight, sweet, and to the point. Okay. Try clock number three. It looks like the, uh, they've been sitting there so long, Scott Mulberry. The rotors are the same color as the fucking calipers. That's how long they've been sitting. Scott Mulberry, you hear my voice? I'm gonna, I want you to hear my voice when you go to sleep at night, you fuck. Rotors are the same color as the calipers. So that's number four. Number four. Look at these beautiful Durangos. Look how pretty they are. And this is a nice silver one. So it's like if I had extra children or something, I'd get that one. Why not? If I if I really needed a third row. So we're up to four track hawks. Four track hawks. Let's keep going. Let's see how many are here. Last time the number was 13. Five. Six. Seven. 
eight track hawks. Oh, oh, oh. Nine. Nine track hawks. Ten. Ten track hawks. Eleven. Eleven track hawks. So we're up to uh, 11 times 100,000. So that's 11 track hogs. Let's see if there's like at least two more. I'm pretty, uh oh, they might have sold two. Oh, wow. That's progress, right? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so we're up to 11. Wow, hey, at least two of them made it. That's cool. Uh, F8 Green 300. I haven't seen one of those before. All right, so it kind of looks like uh, two of them sold. That's great. This is a oh, look at these colors. These must be a 300 S's for 2018. So you got a green one right here. Looks like uh, that looks like the what is that? The battleship or a pastel? That's nice. I don't think I could drive one this green, but. That's some nice colors. It's a shame. They don't even advertise the 300 anymore. It's amazing. Well, I guess that's where it ends. 11 Trackhawks languishing in the summer sun. F8 Green 392. Can't go wrong with that one, right? It's very lovely, very lovely. Yeah, okay. All right, so it looks like uh, they were able to move two of them. Now, whether or not those actually sold or whether or not they're in receiving or anything, getting cleaned up or polished or whatever, who knows? Got a great inventory on compasses here. So if you're looking for a compass, come on down to security and tell them I sent you. Because as long as you tell them I sent you, you know, I get referrals and discounts and stuff. So make sure you tell them I sent. The car would look like had my car been a 2017 or a 2018. This right here is what my car would have looked like. I just don't like those wheels, for God's sakes. And then look at that flat fascia where, the, where those beautiful LED lights could have gone but aren't. You know? This is what I'm talking about. It's all they had to do. It's all they had to do, but they just didn't do it. Why? Yeah. So uh, basically, that's how we're going to have to. Uh, that's how we're going to have to fix the 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee. What we got to do is we got to make it exciting, extremely exciting. This is a new Ram truck. Let's see if this has the big screen. No, it does not. So yeah. Look at this bright green Ram truck. And you know what, when I see something like that, I'm like, well, whatever happened to the SRT Ram truck? I mean, imagine if they got rid of that shitty Viper engine, put a regular Hellcat in there, and gave it the uh, eight-speed transmission that's an automatic. You know, you have a lime green ass racing truck, and you race the shit out of this Ford. Let's see what's gonna happen. I don't even know these guys. Let's see what's gonna happen. We got a Ram truck next to the Ford, let's go. Oh, these guys aren't even flooring it. Look at this. Look at these guys. But you can clearly see that the Ram truck's ahead. You can clearly see that. Look, he's way ahead of the Ford truck. You know why? Because Ford's engines suck. You see? That's one thing I love about my video. It's like you never know what's going to happen in my video. Who would have known that we are going to have a Ram versus Ford race here? Get these people away from my car. Watch this more auto started. Get these people away from my car. All right, and there goes that Hellcat. Yeah, there goes that Hellcat again. Gotta say goodnight to the Hellcat. Kiss her goodnight. Tell these people to get away from my car. <laughs> no, fucking hilarious. All right, so anyway. Ugh. Okay, ladies. Okay, so I get my cooled seat nice and ready. Let's, uh, in fact, let's put, we, you know what, let's, uh, let's put down the windows and open up the shade, you know, because we're driving around cool, because we're cool. <laughs> After all, we're not in a Ford product, so we, we can be happy about what we drive. 
Let me get my seat belt. But yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's like getting into, when you get into these things, all those automatic features should come right on, cool everything down, make it nice and cool. You know, hit that economy button so I can save some fuel. Yeah, why not? And then watch that back so that I don't run over anything. Oh, there's a guy with a Mustang back there. Thing. Okay. And after this car passes, I'm cleared to go. You know? So that that's how easy it is. It's like if I had like a manual transmission, I would have a finger. I, I wouldn't even be able to use my other hand, you know? But because everything's automatic, it's like I can drive with one hand on my phone and one hand on the car. All right, come on, truck. Come on, hurry up. Hurry up, truck. Hurry up. Hurry up. You see? Ford cars can't do that. Because they don't have 480 horsepower or whatever. They don't have anything near 500. You know? Somebody probably should have told him. It's like, hey, why don't you take that bullshit boss engine and put an automatic on it and drop that shit into one of these explorers and turn that shit into a monster. But what did the Ford guys say? They said, nah, we're not gonna do that. Let's give these people just enough power to get back and forth to work. And then the people said, fuck that, we're gonna abandon you. How about that? We're gonna go buy an Audi. Because Audi makes us feel like we're rich and powerful and famous. Yeah. We're gonna buy Audis with V6s and a T next to it because it makes us cool. Absolutely. Kudos to you. Ford really dropped the ball. Look at this Volkswagen. This Volkswagen. Ugh. Jesus Christ. The only thing they make worth a damn is the Bugattis. Or Volkswagen Group, I should say. But uh, that's just where it is, you know? There's that Alfa Romeo, Stelvio. You'll notice that n almost none of these people have a Quadrifoglio. You'll notice that. They don't have that little lucky uh, four-leaf clover on theirs. I guess $85,000 is a little bit steep when you're trying to be pretentious European. How pretentious. So it's like while I was answering that survey, they're talking about how aggressively do you start and stop and all that. The answer is pretty goddamn aggressively, as you can see. I'm already doing 40 miles per hour. I may have to throw on the brakes just to slow down. You know, these little township roads, these don't really qualify as uh, twisties. They don't really qualify. But see, the amazing thing about the Jeep is, is how fast it goes from just sitting still to turning into an absolute animal. Like these cars are fucking beasts. You know, nobody's supposed to have anywhere near 500 horsepower in their car. These things turn into absolute beasts. Look at these cup holders. I got cup holders for American sized drinks. Look at this shit. Fucking double gulp of Diet Mountain Dew up in here. Mm. Cause it's hot outside. You know? So. It Oh, shit. You know, you do that enough, you start losing miles per gallon, like, like, like Thanos snapping his fingers. This shit is ridiculous. See, this is what I hate. I end up at the front of the light. I got goddamn Toyota camera in front of me. What am I supposed to do with that? And he's driving all slow and chill. Look at this. You see? Now you see that light up there is green. Now had I been in the front, I'd I'd already be through that third light right there. But now with this Toyota camera. Jesus Christ. That's this camera. It's like the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh-oh. Here we go. We got another light. Excuse me. How aggressively do you leave each light? From zero to what? How aggressively do you leave each light? It's amazing they ask questions like that. And the sad thing is, I have to answer 
my goodness, I'm doing like 70, 75 miles per hour off of every freaking light. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. It doesn't make no damn sense. You know? They should, they, I don't think they asked any questions about my miles per gallon. Yeah, shit. Through these fucking lights, and then you have to slow down just to make sure nobody tries to jump ahead of you at the light. But see, the Jeep SRT is really their best product because the thing about it is, why spend two thousand dollars a month for a track hawk when you can get pretty much the same shit for a thousand? Doesn't make any goddamn sense. It looks the same. That doesn't help. They didn't even put Hellcat badges on the side, for God's sakes. That's just where we are. And then you gotta, sometimes you gotta slow down real quick, because you never know. The so old Pacifica, Chrysler gave up on the Pacifica. They invented the crossover, gave up on the shit. Look at this guy. Fucking Range Rover. Look at this guy. Keep that slow-ass Range Rover. I don't give a fuck how much it costs. Keep that shit behind me. Stay right behind me, buddy. Oh, I got a Toyota trying to catch up. Look at this Toyota. Toyota trying to catch up. Get, get lost. Get lost. <laughs> Why are you behind me? Is that a Corolla? I think it is. They're so ugly now. I can't even tell the difference. <sighs> well, yeah. That's but that's that's about that. I, I think I've I think I've pretty much said enough. I think I've you know stress my points, you know? Let's go. Oh, this is so bad fun. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's about it. We're gonna get on the highway. Let's see what the highway's like. Let's get on the highway. I can make these videos as long as I want because I got the iPhone 4K with 256 gigabyte. Look at this guy. Oh my god, you drive just slow enough to stop me at the fucking red light, you bastard. Uh-oh. Yeah, I get a tire check. Hmm. Yeah, so we'll get we're gonna go throw some air in that and see what happens. Yeah, so I guess I'll stop for now. Well, I, th I think I've I think I've made my points. I think I've made my points as poignantly as possible. Fortunately, I was just passing a good year as I was driving. Apparently, there was a nail in the road, and uh, it emptied out my uh, back tire. But one thing I can also say is um, that uh, when you buy one of these trucks, like I don't think the Durango comes with run flats, but I know the SRT Jeeps do, and the Trackhawk does. Um, run flats, a lot of people, some people don't like run flats because of ride quality. Me personally, I never really had a rough ride out of them. Um, but what I can say is that if you do have the run flats, obviously if something happens to a tire or whatever, you can have more time to get to a service center than, you know, if it just flattens out and it's a regular tire. So that's always something worth remembering. It's actually funny that this should happen now, considering I'm doing like a full review about the uh, driving dynamics of the Jeep SRT and the Jeep Grand Cherokee. But um, I guess anything can happen in my videos, anything at all.